So don't worry, <laughs> unless I keel over, then it's a problem. <laughs> hey, on behalf, on behalf of the, uh, the Board of Governors of the Wickenburg Christian Academy and our amazing staff, we want to welcome you to this year's 2022 graduation. Um, my name is Ed Kent. I'm uh, the Chairman of the Board of Governors uh, for the Christian Academy. I've been doing this for a number of years. And uh, we have an amazing board of governors, and I want to just take a moment before I get into my thoughts, uh, just to introduce all of the people that are part of our board. Uh, so Mr. Tad Nixon, uh, if you'll stand. Tad has been a part of our board for a number of years. He's got a couple of people uh, on the And besides Tad, then we have Mr. Sean Clark. And Sean Clark, this is representing the and then one of our graduates this year here, Dad, is Ed Truxel. We are so glad that Ed is part of our team and uh, uh, looking for Ed. I didn't see Alan Aver tonight. I know that he has been uh, having some uh, struggles with health but Alan uh, used to be uh, head of the uh, uh, National Bank here in town. Uh, he's part of our board. We are just so thankful that he's there. Uh, Pastor Greg Hint, uh, who also has someone up on the stage. Uh, on the stage. Thank you. Great. And Art Polis. Art Polis has just been this amazing uh, rock with our group and uh, just wonderful finances. Thank you, Art. I appreciate it. And then someone near and dear to me is my wife, Cheryl. And Sherilyn has been on the board uh, with me uh, for uh, about the last 12 years. And Sherilyn, thank you. We appreciate your service. <laughs> and then finally, uh, Mr. Greg Cornelia, who has been very much a part of our community, uh, and now lives and has a home both here and in Prescott. Uh, Greg is, is very much involved with this school. Uh, we appreciate all the things that he brings to our board. And so that makes up our board governors, and we really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, normally at this point in time, this is where uh, the head of the Board of Governors shares something which he, which he thinks is profound, some pedagogy thing with uh, uh, and tying it to faith, and uh, everybody gets to listen, and then nobody remembers it because it was really boring. <laughs> so I got to thinking about it, and I really like stories. I love it when someone will tell a story to me, and I love sharing stories. And there's a point to it, but it's gonna take me a little bit of time to get there, sorry. But I wanna share a story with you tonight. Sheila and I love to uh, help other people, and we're involved with lots of different things. So one of the things we're involved with is uh, more recently with our church, we've been going to Rocky Point 
uh, not for the beach. <laughs> Can we go down to build houses? Uh, many of you have been to Rocky Point, you know it, uh, Puerto, Puerto Pinasca. It's a, it's a very interesting place, uh, beautiful resorts uh, surrounded by abject poverty. And so we work with this group called One Mission uh, that builds houses. And uh, we go down, we actually pay money to go work. It's a novel idea. I don't know how they do it, but they get hundreds of us to go down. And, uh, and I'm very excited to the fact that uh, uh, this past week uh, we just completed the 1,000th house for people that are in poverty. So we go down with our church, and our church uh, is, a, is a big church out in the valley, and uh, we go down with, and we normally do it for a three-day weekend, and other churches show up as well. They, they come from Yuma, they come from Tucson, uh, all over Phoenix, and of course we have some from further away. Uh, some people from Winslow were there the last time, and even a youth group from Colorado Springs drove all the way down to help build houses. And it's an amazing experience. But what's kind of a, a kick for me is uh, in the evenings after we've had dinner, uh, there's all these little bonfires. You know, we have fire pits out here tonight, and uh, uh, that's part of this organization. Uh, so we all build little fires. But this one church shows up, and they have, they bring in their fifth wheels, and then they bring in their horse trailers, and there's no horses in it. They're rolling out this eight foot brown fire pit. And the horse trailer is full of mesquite wood. And it's incredible. And they set up all their chairs. And it's a pretty good sized church. And it's kind of fun to watch them. And they, uh, you know, here we have this tiny little bonfire over here in the dirt. And these guys have this flaming torch. It's just amazing. And it's kind of, I, I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, you know, it's February, it's really cold and we're looking kind of puny. I wonder what's going on over at their place. And so I wandered over there. And I can see, you know, everybody's got these folding chairs, but there's this one guy who's kind of holding court. You know, he's always the guy, you know, there's always somebody who's talking loud and, and he, he's telling all this stuff about what's going on in his life and, oh, he's been to New York and he worked with a Fortune 500 company and then he was in Seattle with a software company and then he was down in uh, Silicon Valley and then he was up in, uh, let's, see, uh, let's see, Seattle and uh, there was another one. Oh, up in Marin County, that's right, he worked for an insurance company. And, uh, and I'm hearing all this in the distance with this guy talking, and I finally wander over there. I said, I wonder if this, this guy must be, he's either in sales and marketing. And all these chairs are around except his. He has the chaise lounge. <laughs> right away, I knew he's the marketing guy. Come on, who are we kidding? And he's going on and on, and I'm, I'm kind of standing there listening, and then, I'm about to walk away, and he realizes I'm not part of their team. And he says, hey, who are you? And I said, well, I'm Ed Kins. And I figured he was gonna ask me where I was from, and he didn't say that. He said, so what's your contribution? Well, what's my contribution? I don't know, I'm down here building houses. He says, no, no, that's on a weekend. What else do you do? Well, I started to tell him about my work. You know. Typical mill guy, right? Here's what I do. I've got these three different companies. And, uh, and, no, no, no. I don't care about your work. What's your contribution? And I couldn't figure it out. And finally, I just said, well, okay, you probably want to know some volunteer stuff. Uh, I work with our library in town. I work with the Christian Academy <laughs> uh, on their board. I, I serve on the hospital. And he sat up in his chair. And he went, hospital? Where? And I got all these people, you know, there's 50 people standing around. And I said, well, in Wickenburg. And he gets out of his chair, bolts out of his chair, comes over to me and puts his hand on my shoulder and squeezes the tar out of the thing. I think it still hurts. <laughs> and he said, you saved my life. And I went, no, I don't even know you. He says, no, no, your hospital saved my life. In fact, you changed my life. And he goes into this story about being up in Las Vegas at the Consumer Electronics Show, working for a startup company down in Phoenix. It's late at night, Thursday, the show shuts down, he's driving home, of course he's driving his Audi. And of course he, he says, now Ed, I was driving 85, but that's really kind of a joke, it was more like 100. And I'm cruising back, 
towards Wickenburg, blood alley. And I'm headed down the highway, and I see up ahead, it's really, it's late at night, it's after midnight, and I see this car coming towards me, and I go, okay. And then I see this car start to ease off to the right, and I'm going, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then it overcorrects, and suddenly the headlights are coming right at him. And the last thing he remembered was, this can't be good. <laughs> and with that, a head-on collision, and he wakes up, and he's so funny, he, he tells me this, and it, with big eyes, and he said, Ed, I opened my eyes, and all I could see was white. And I thought, hallelujah, I made it to heaven. <laughs> he's so excited. He's, this is incredible. I mean, I'm going to miss my kids, I'm going to miss my wife, but they're letting me in. And he's so excited, and then suddenly the... the the white starts to come down and he starts to see red. And then the red, red starts flashing. And then he sees a fireman. And he realizes, oh, it's the airbag. <laughs> <laughs> and this fireman is working to extricate him from his car, what's left of it, which is more like a, uh, you know, a squished up uh, little bug. In fact, it was so bad that the other thing, the last thing he did remember before he went into shock was another fireman coming up who looked really official. And he looked at the car, and he looked at the other fireman, and his comment was, you mean he lived through this? How encouraging. He told me he couldn't feel his legs, he couldn't feel anything in his body, and with going into shock, he passed out. The next thing he remembered was waking up in the Wickenburg Hospital, with tubes in him in all kinds of different spots, laying there, and a whole team of people in our hospital working to save his life get him stable, to get him back to where he was going to be okay. And it was pretty scary. And they kept telling him, you know, as, as you've seen in television shows and maybe you've experienced yourself in the hospital, I know I have. Hang in there. Hang in there. Stay with us. We're going to get you through. And sure enough, we did. We are with him in hospital now. And got him air back down to, to the valley. And I share this story because it's amazing what happened next, because here's a guy who has been working 50, 60 hours a week all his life. He had his kids late, as he was telling me. He was 50 years old, and he had a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old. Good luck with that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then, this gave him an opportunity to do what he just said to me. He thought about it and he said, what's my contribution? And he did something totally amazing. Here he had a year of rehab to try to get back. And he decided, I'm going to go back. I got a master's degree, but I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to take courses. I'm going to get my teaching certificate. And with that, he ended up getting his certificate. And I said, so what did you do next? And he says, you're not going to believe this, Ed. I teach 7th and 8th grade math and science in the Roosevelt School District in South Phoenix with a bunch of kids that most people would just throw away. And I want to tell you, I love it. It is the greatest experience of my life. It is the most incredible contribution I could ever make. And I want to also tell you that I've worked all these different jobs in all these different places, and I've put in the time and the effort, and I've been away from home, teaching these kids, these seventh and eighth graders, that is the hardest job I ever have done, ever have done. And I share this story tonight for two reasons. Some of them are pretty obvious. Today we're honoring six grads that are just amazing young people. But it took some people to get them here, didn't it? It took some amazing teachers. And so if you're a teacher, whether it's at the Christian Academy or anywhere else, could you please stand up for a moment so we can recognize you? with this guy. It took me back to Romans 12, 2, where Paul was talking to the people in Rome. 
telling them, do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, perfect will. And out of the Psalms, David wrote, I know that serving others as I serve our Lord and Savior, excuse me, this is, this is out of uh, Peter, I know that serving others as I serve our Lord and Savior moves me towards a fullness of life, and from that love grows. I got to watch this in this man, and it's incredible to watch. And so this brings to the last part for you guys, and really for all of us. What's your contribution? And that's a question of only you and our Lord can answer together. And when you do it together, it's amazing. It's amazing. Let me close with this from Timothy, where, Thomas, where Paul is writing. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved and a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word, the word of truth. Class of 2022, you will soon become part of a greater family of WCA and all of its affiliations. And we hope it brings you great memories and joy throughout your lives. On behalf of the board and the staff, welcome to this graduation. We're now going to pray. What a blessing it is to pray today, isn't it? That we get to come together, that we get to gather together to honor God and to honor these awesome young adults. We can't call them kids anymore, even though we look and there's all these memories of these little ones that we had to hold or burp or all the other fun stuff that you guys get to talk about later today. Or this weekend as you embarrass them at the graduation parties, right? Of course you will. Of course you will. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, for each and every single graduate that's here. Lord, we commit them to your hand today, understanding and knowing that your plans for them are great. Lord, that you're never going to leave them, never forsake them, that you're going to take them each and every step of the way. And I pray that even in their most difficult days, Father, that your strength will rise up in their hearts. I pray, Lord, when they don't know where to turn, that they'll turn their heads to you. And Father, I pray that you fill them with your Holy Spirit, leading God of every single day of their lives and let them know that they are called, they are anointed, and they are safe in your hands. I pray that in Jesus' name. I'd like to invite you to please stand along with our, our class. Uh, in your program is the Lord's Prayer. I'd like you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Have you heard? Sorry to be the one if you have not heard to inform you that there is a new infectious disease spreading like an Arizona wildfire and it is in Wickenburg. No, you haven't heard? Well, get ready because it's likely coming your way. The disease. Well, gratefully, it's not a strain of the coronavirus. No, the disease that's going viral in Wickenburg is generosity. 
Each year that passes that I've been at Wickenburg <coughs> Christian Academy, I am more and more overwhelmed by the support and generosity for the youth in Wickenburg. You are about to witness the incredible results of this disease. Here, not to offer vaccines or mask mandates or antiviral protocols, but rather to infect us is a first presenter, Jackie Lundblam from the Wickenburg Community Hospital CEO. Thank you, Barbara, and thank you, Ed, and graduates. It's very exciting to see all of you up here. It actually brought back a few memories of my own high school graduation, sitting up on the podium. And as Barbara stated, I'm here to present the Wickenburg Community Hospital Scholarship to an individual who impressed me personally with her compassion, her hard work, and her desire to serve others. This particular scholarship goes to an individual who is pursuing a healthcare career. And so without further ado, I'll present this $1,000 scholarship to McKenna Egan. The next person to spread the disease, we welcome to the platform Stephanie Fornoff, who is here to present awards both for the Wickenburg Chamber of Commerce's Education Committee and the Dell Webb Center for the Performing Arts. Thank you, Barbara. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming out this evening and showing your loving support of our graduates. Congratulations, everyone, on all your hard work to get you here today. Um, as Barbara mentioned, I am here um, as the chairman of the Education Committee from the Wickenburg Chamber of Commerce. Um, every year, the committee holds a fundraising event. It is the screening of Rocky Horror Picture Show at the local Swarrow Theater. Um, the proceeds raised from this year's screening um, enabled us to give away two $500 scholarships. And this evening, I am presenting one of those to Anna Gangle. And then in my role as the Director of Marketing and Box Office Operations over at the Dell Webb Center for the Performing Arts, uh, we also have a scholarship we give out every year. Uh, it is named after um, Ginny DeVore, one of our presidents who has sadly passed away. Um, and the money for these scholarships is raised through concessions and merchandise sales at our events. So if you come to a concert and buy a t-shirt or a CD, a portion um, of those sales comes back to the web center and then we give that um, away as a scholarship. This year we were grateful to raise $18,000 towards scholarships. Uh, we awarded six new scholarships and we uh, renewed five scholarships. So it's very exciting for us. So this evening, I would like to give away one of those um, $1,000 scholarships to Matthew DeShazer. <laughs> generosity um, is none seen like in this community by the Wellick Foundation. The WCA has benefited an over $300,000 for the school over several years. This past year, a grant was awarded for a little over $117,000, allowing us to sustain the investment that they made into our school a few years ago into technology for teachers and students in the classroom. 
to accommodate the growth at WCA, which has been 56.8% growth over the past two years, and also to uh, invest in the community. WCA has a desire to do more to invite the community onto our campus. So we are upgrading our multi-purpose room, which we call the Lion's Den this summer, um, with a whole lot of new technology that will make it a, a very appealing venue for the community to use for meetings, gatherings, uh, church event, uh, services, just a variety of things. And we are so grateful to be able to open our campus to the community. And now to continue their infectious disease of generosity to present to our students um, is Bill Green from the Welling Foundation. Scholarship is named after George Wellick. We've all heard a lot about Vi Wellick, but uh, that's because George passed away in 1983 uh, and Vi much later than that. Um, they used to own the uh, Flying E Ranch is what they were known for. They bought it in 1952 and they uh, left their entire estate for the benefit of the people of Wickenburg. Um, the the award is $5,000 a year, renewable for four years. And this year it goes to Zion Hens. that I get to share tonight because a representative is not here, and that is our local Elks Lodge has given uh, three $750 scholarships to the following graduates, McKenna Egan, Anna Gangle, and Zion Hens. Earlier this week at our uh, awards assembly at school, um, uh, McKenna received a scholarship from the American Legion. Anna Gangle received scholarships from the Gem and Mineral so local Gem and Mineral Society, the American Legion. She's also received scholarships from the Canyon Christian School Consortium. Zion has also received a track and field scholarship to Ottawa University. So our students in this community are infecting many with the act of generosity. And so as we think about and we remember, we think of Jesus' words when it comes to generosity. Give, and this is for you, because much has been poured out for you. Give, and it will be given to you. In good measure, pressed down, shaken to death, gathered and running over for by the standards by which you have been measured so it will be given to you go and be generous infect some people <laughs> oh excuse me there's another representative local that i uh, didn't receive a word that they were coming tonight i'm so grateful that they are here um, I worked with them closely when I used to work for the Pregnancy Center, and we have a representative from the Seroptimus International here to present an award. Uh, please come forward. Claudia Hunt. This is really impressive Ooh. with all these people here. Good, good. Okay, I'm here to give a scholarship for the next four years, totaling $6,000, to Anna Gangle.
Thank you, Claudia. Um, now for someone who has given and continues to give and give and give the generosity of this woman, my friend, my fellow sister in Christ, my co-laborer, and a unanimous decision by this senior class for the keynote speaker for tonight's graduation, please welcome Mrs. Maureen Rigo. Good evening. The first thing I want to do is thank all of you for coming tonight. This showing for our graduates is just absolutely wonderful. I want to thank our school board for continuing your work so that we can continue to have this opportunity for students. I want to thank the parents for sharing your students with us because without you we wouldn't have this opportunity. And um, I especially am thankful for the opportunity to be a part of their lives. Most of these kids for a very long time. And I want to thank the seniors for letting me talk to them one more time. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get serious. All right, seniors, how many of you guys would consider me a success? <laughs> I was hoping that's what I would get. Um, okay, I want you to know that my parents did not consider me a success. And most of my siblings do not consider me a success. When I was sitting in that chair at your age, I declared that I was going to be a plant pathologist and I was going to help farmers have better crops than I was going to marry a farmer. And you probably know I didn't do any of those. Um, so, we at WCA, our whole goal is to make you a success. We want you, when you leave here, to be a success. But what does that look like? What does it mean to be a success? And so that's what I want to talk about tonight. You guys all have had some experiences while you've been at WCA. Some of them failures, and some of them successes. So I'm going to share a few memories, just a few for each student, so I can remind them about their growth and their success at WCA. And I'm going alphabetically. So I'm starting with Matthew DeShazo. <laughs> okay, Matthew left WCA for junior high and then came back for high school. And so it's interesting to see the changes. And I got to watch you grow from um, an insecure little boy that was never sure of yourself or your standing with others to a competent young man who started up the year as student body president, helped his sister start a Youth Alive program here at our school. Um, this is a young man, he went to DC with me two weeks ago, and it was thrilling to watch him because he, like his father, loves to share the gospel. And he's a chip off the old block. Good job, Dad. Um, but I want to kind of remind Matthew of something. We saw a lot of people of influence while we were in Washington, DC. And some of those people had influence because they talked about issues. And I want to bring somebody else to your mind. So one of my favorite people in American history is Billy Graham. I don't know if you know this about Billy Graham. Billy Graham never preached about issues. He only ever had one message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he influenced 12 sitting presidents from Truman all the way to Barack Obama. And the scripture tells us when we are faithful to God that we'll stand before kings. And so Matthew, I'm gonna challenge you to be like Billy Graham. One message, one message that matters. Okay, um, one of Matthew's favorite memories is his interactions that with Mr. Oldstad while he was in his class and he put on his favorite was winning the state basketball championship with his friends. And then I asked each of the students to tell me what they hope to be doing five years from now. So Matthew said he hopes to be married, starting a family. Ready for that, Grandpa? Okay. 
coaching basketball and be in full-time ministry in a church. So that's where he hopes to be in five years. Okay, McKenna Egan. So one of my favorite memories of McKenna Egan was actually last year. So McKenna was our female archer of the year. And archery is one of the things I absolutely love doing. But what got her there is what I remember the best. Because McKenna decided early in the year that it wasn't about getting medals. That she didn't care if she got medals. It was about making herself better each time. So in archery, we celebrate PBs, which stand for personal best. And I think she had the most PBs that year. And it paid off because she ended up our female archer of the year. So McKenna, I hope as you go through life that you'll keep that attitude, that you'll always be trying to get a little bit better and a little bit closer to Christ. That's my prayer for you. Okay, McKenna says that her most meaningful lesson from WCA was having confidence in herself, and we've really seen that this year. And she plans on pursuing a business management degree and hopes to have her own business in five years. And then there's Anna, my sweet Anna. Anna's first year at WCA was really hard for her because she had a knee injury and she couldn't play on the sports and she couldn't get involved in the games at lunch recesses and she sat by herself a lot and that was kind of hard to watch. But she's such a dear person, and she would sit with me at lunch, and most of the kids avoid me like the plague at lunch. <laughs> so I got to know Anna fairly well and love her dearly, and then I got her in biology class. And Anna shines at science, and she loved it, and I loved having her, and so we have a lot of good memories from biology class. And Anna hopes in five years to be living up north where it's cold. I probably won't visit much, okay? <laughs> And she wants to be working with animals, either in a zoo or out in the field. Okay, Zion. I don't know if Zion's gonna remember this. Zion, when he was in seventh grade, had a joke today. Zion told me he was gonna be a comedian when he was in seventh grade. And he was the entertainer of the class and the life of the party. Um, he just always wanted to make everyone feel better. That's what he used to tell me. And he had a serious side too, and as he's grown and matured, we've seen that a lot more. And Zion's been responsible for helping some of our students stay in school, and that's something I really appreciate. Um, Zion is telling me now his favorite memory was winning the state basketball championship with his friends and going to the national tournament in Ohio. And he told me he hopes in five years that he will be finishing college or finished with college. And he's planning on training in sports medicine, so he still wants to be making everybody feel better. <laughs> that hasn't changed. And he wants to be getting his own house and securing a good paying job. Good goal. Okay. Then we come to Doc. Doc in junior high was the bull in the china shop. <laughs> He would flip his pencil and it would go all the way across the room. And he would go, I didn't mean to, Mrs. Regal, in a panic. Um, we had lots of talks, Doc and I, about um, controlling his movements and his actions and his everything. Um, he's kind of a fun kid. Uh, Doc went to D.C. with me in junior high and I watched him charge through D.C. He also went to Italy with a group of us in high school, and I watched him charge through Italy. Um, and the most fun thing, when we were in Italy, he got picked by a group at a restaurant to be taught how to throw a girl over his shoulder in a dance. And I'm thinking, seriously, Doc? But he did really well, he controlled his moves, it was great, we all had fun watching him. And this year, it's been a pleasure to watch him charge down the basketball court in control. So that's been really great. <laughs> Doc said what he learned at the Christian Academy, two things. He said, if it's not your business, don't make it your business. Good plan. And then he said, and I loved this one, if you love others, you will be loved, and you should treat everyone well, despite your personal feelings. 
good lesson, Doc. Okay, so Doc said in five years he hopes to be getting out of college, starting his first business, and engaged or married. All right. <laughs> Joelle. Okay. Joelle has a special place in my heart. I've worked with her for a long time, and she's quiet, but she's such a nice quiet. Joelle has the heart of a poet, if you didn't know it. Uh, since so much of God's word is communicated to us in poetry, I believe that the gift of words is a very special gift, and she has it. She doesn't always know that she has it. So in junior high, she wrote this really wonderful poem, and I wanted her to submit it to the Cowboy Poetry Contest, and she kept saying, I can't, it's not good enough. It's, you know, and she won first place overall. <laughs> so um, she really has a gift of words, but she has a hard time with the spoken word. She does the written word, and that's where I, the spoken word is where I've seen her really grow this year. And of all the seniors, when she got up and gave her senior thesis, she used notes, she didn't read her paper, and she just exuded authority and confidence. So that's where I've seen the most growth in Joelle. Okay, Joelle said, wait, I gotta find it in my notes. Um, she fondly remembers her sophomore year study halls on the patio and learning the importance of history. And she hopes five years from now she'll be wherever God wants her to be. Okay. So we've all heard where each student wants to be in about five years. So if you make those goals, are you a success? If you don't make those goals, are you a failure? I'm going back to my original question about what does it mean to be a success? And I know you guys are excited and I know you're, you're really hyped up tonight, so you're gonna forget most of what I said. So I'm giving you a reminder. <laughs> the teacher in me. Okay, so Miss Hillary helped me come up with a little business card, and I'm hoping that you guys will carry these in your wallet or your purse or your pocket or whatever, so that you can remind yourself the direction you really do need to go. And so what I've done is taken the word success and used it as an acronym and spelled it out with what we want for these students. And this is really our goal at Wickenburg Christian Academy all of the time. So S. S stands for secure in the assurance that you know who God is and who you are. You have that assurance. Okay. Um, Isaiah 32, 17 says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness Righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. You is unashamed of the gospel. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Don't ever be afraid to share the gospel. C is for compassion and caring for others. 1 Peter 3.8 says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, and be courteous. And then the middle C, the very middle of the word, that C is for consistently obedient to God. And if you can do that, you've got it all. Consistently obedient to God. 1 Samuel 15, 22 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. And E is for exercising your God-given talents and abilities to serve God and others. Okay, so that's from Romans 12, six through eight. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. You all have a gift. 
The question is, what are you going to do with it? His, the gift is his gift to you. Your gift to him is what you do with it. And that's part of success. Okay, and then S is for smart, because they're grounded in wisdom from God. Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all the getting, get understanding. You guys don't ever stop learning. Keep getting wisdom. Okay, if you're too old to learn, you're probably in a box in the ground. Got me? Okay. And the last S is for slaying the giants. Romans 8.37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So here at WCA, our goal has been to help you develop godly character so that you can go out bold as a lion. Okay? Mr. D told you in the chapel earlier this year that you have two choices when you encounter difficulties in your future. You can either listen to the giant facing you, right? Or you can listen to the God you are following. That's your two choices. So I want you to know that you have the key to success. It's not a secret, you already have it. You just have to use it. So um, your success is wrapped up in knowing who God is and who you are, being unashamed of the gospel, Practicing compassion for others and obedience to God. Exercising your God-given gifts and talents to serve God and others. Gaining wisdom throughout your lives and conquering the giants in your life through all of these character traits through the power of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. And therein is the key. Commit thy works unto the Lord. That's first and foremost. So my prayer for you is that you will continually echo Joshua in saying, as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord. And now we have a tradition at WCA where the graduates each get to share a little bit with you. Although I'm thinking as our class size keeps growing, we may have to rethink this tradition and we'll be here till 2 a.m. Uh, but, but we can continue it this year. And so uh, to uh, share a little bit with you, our first presenter is Matthew DeShazo. Thank you guys for coming, and I know uh, not all of you guys came for me specifically, but uh, <laughs> I really just want to thank you guys for coming, and seeing all these lovely faces out here really means a lot, and I know it means a lot to my fellow uh, classmates and graduates, Lord, you know, and uh, anyway, so thank you, and uh, I just want to say thank you to WCA, in general, all the memories I have, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the amazing. Uh, you know, it, I went to school uh, from, at WCA from kindergarten to fourth grade, and then I uh, went to Congress from fifth to eighth. And then I came back for high school at uh, Little Bit Christian Academy. And through that, I definitely had some trials, some tribulations, and some amazing and wonderful things that have happened throughout my life. I want to take this a moment to actually kind of talk about that. And uh, 
something that I didn't actually plan originally, but uh, the Lord just kind of put it on my heart. Um, so, growing up, I uh, lived around here, uh, Wickenburg, you know, area, my whole entire life. I was born at uh, Dove Webb Hospital in Surprise, Arizona. And uh, anyways, to keep going, I, when I was uh, five, my parents uh, got divorced. And then when I was in uh, kindergarten, I actually, actually, it's a little bright. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, when I was in kindergarten, uh, I didn't necessarily get held back, but it was more or less being held back. And so, and then in fourth grade, I, I gave up in life. And in general, I had uh, deep suicidal thoughts, and I wanted to give up. I, I did. Um, anyways, I ended up going to uh, Congress Elementary, which is a really great thing to be back. And at Congress, I met some people, and it, it uh, built me up. And just God had brought me out of uh, that depression and that the suicidal thoughts that I was having, and He set me free. And then I made some other poor choices, and I uh, got into uh, smoking and drinking and stuff like that, and I, I vape and stuff like that. And so anyways, I say all this to talk about how good God is, because then he ended up bringing me out of that and showing me his love and everything. And through all of this, in high school, um, I mean, it, let's go with this. In six to eight, I, I stopped all that stuff because it was mostly just in fifth. It was in fifth grade, and I, I stopped all that stuff because God set me free. Because after I went to a, a kids camp up in Prescott, actually, and I was shown that I, what I was doing was wrong, right? And anyways, so then I uh, come back and I I actually got on student council at Congress Elementary uh, from six to eight. Uh, in eighth grade, I was a uh, student council president, and then I, uh, that summer after eighth grade, a week after eighth grade, I got my first job, and uh, then I, I really never stopped working, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, to keep going, if I, my, uh, I got to serve at a, at the kids camp that kind of redirected my life and just pour into other people's lives. And I've been doing that, I've uh, done that for, for four years now, and I'm gonna go back up to my fifth year. Anyways, I also have uh, been student council president at WCA, I've been uh, vice president at WCA, I've gotten to be youth, uh, gotten to be youth live president for three years, vice president for one year, and I've gotten to play basketball and do track and field and I've gotten to lead others to the Lord. And um, so the Lord brought me out of darkness unto the light. And so I say this not to brag about myself or not to brag about what I've accomplished, but to just show you who the Lord is and how great and how good he is. Because he loves each and every one of you. He desires each and every one of you. So I know this is kind of maybe unorthodox, but if everybody would uh, bow their heads with me. So, I just want everybody to repeat this after me if you're comfortable with it. Dear Lord, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I know that I've sinned and I've done wrong. But I want to turn away from that, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So if you just uh, prayed that prayer for the first time ever, I want you to uh, take confidence and take a boldness. And you believed it, sorry. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time ever and you believed it, then I want you to take confidence and a boldness that you are saved and that you are going to heaven. And let me tell you, heaven is going to, there's going to be a party in heaven. We're going to be partying with Jesus, and it's going to be great. <laughs> so uh, anyways, to keep going, Alex. 
Uh, to keep going, I'll wrap it up right now. All right. So, not to mention, uh, keep going now. Uh, not to mention my dad, I've been a part of WCA forever, right? My dad's been teaching there forever. It's been more than 15 years now. He's been teaching there. Um, and I really just want to thank um, all these amazing people that have impacted my life and helped me grow. My, uh, my pastors, my spiritual leaders throughout my life, uh, my basketball coach, my, my track coaches, um, the, the staff of Congress, the staff of Wickenburg Christian Academy, the teachers that I've had throughout my life that have blessed me in so many ways. Um, Mrs. Rigo, um, you are amazing, and you've inspired me, and I just want to thank you for your boldness in the Lord, and who he's created you to be, and you really uh, showed me a love for history that I never, never really had, ever. I never really appreciated history until Mrs. Rigo, and she taught us about... Um, she was a spiritual leader in my life. And then she taught us about politics, we did things about that too, and it really just opened my mind to different, a whole bunch of different things. And uh, I also want to thank my family. You guys have been there for me. You guys have been part of my firm foundation. Thank you guys, I love you guys so much. All right, um, I could name something uh, specifically on every, uh, every single one of you, but I don't really think I have the time for that, so I'm just going to name a couple, okay? Um, anyways, my mom, I love you so much, and you, uh, you are a wonderful person, and you have done so many things for me. You have... You have been there for me, you have encouraged me, and I just want to thank you for that. Jessica, you've been like, obviously I had a mom, but you've been another mom in my life. Even though you're my older sister, we've taken care of each other, we've supported each other. We might go at each other's throats here and there, but you know, you've done so much for me. And I just, I'm so grateful and thankful for that. And uh, Brianna, I don't even know where to begin. Um, you've really been a mom to me and always supported me and backed me and encouraged me and knew what to say when, when no one else did. So thank you, and always supporting me in, in basketball and, and, and everything. Grandma, you've always been there in my life, and I love you. Dad, there's so many different things I can say for you and Grandma. I don't think I have the words to say, but you have been a spiritual leader in my life. You have grown me. You have, I, don't, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier right now in my speech, but the, the, one of the biggest reasons I did not commit suicide in fourth grade was because of my dad. He just had gone through a divorce, and one of my reasoning was, how could I put him through him losing a child? So anyways, because I knew how much he loved me, so, there's just so many different things I could say. So thank you, Dad, for being who you are in the Lord. Alright. Thank you to all my fellow students at Wickenburg Christian Academy. You guys have grown me in, in more ways than you know, challenged me in more ways than you will ever know. So, anyways. Life says this, I'll just, let's go to the happy moment, right? Like to the sloth, sloth said from Ice Age, 
You know, my, uh, you know my, one, my mother once told me that bad news was just good news in disguise. Even though things look bad, there's a rainbow around every corner. You know, I gotta really think to this thought. I'm really intelligent guy. <laughs> All right, Matthew uh, 6.10. Your will be done at, on earth as it is in heaven. So even when we are going through tough times, we can take assurance and find peace in God, and that He is in control. So for my fellow graduates, I love each and every one of you more than, more than you can know. You are all special and wonderfully made. Although, some may admit uh, a little more than others. <laughs> I just looked at Joel. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's an inside joke. Anyways, um, so you are unique in your own ways. Doc has been, honestly, this is kind of weird because I'm older, but he's honestly been kind of like a bigger brother to me. I know it's kind of weird to say, but he really has. He's grown me and in a multitude of ways. Zion has, has always been that friend that can lean on, always encourage you. Has been the brother through the thick and the thin, through the hardships. We've had our rough patches, we've had our, our great patches, right? But he's always been there. Always had my back, no matter what. All right, but can I... I just want to thank you for who you are and growing me. I don't know if you'll ever know. Joelle, you are so funny and amazing and smart. I just, I can't wait to see where God leads you because he has something so great and wonderful for you because he created you and he, God makes no mistakes. When he, and just like when he created you, he made no mistake. And I just want to encourage you to take confidence in who you are and who he created you to be. And then for Anna, she's really been like a sister to me. I can't even look at her right now. Anyways, <laughs> she's really been a sister to me. And when I need someone to study with, she's always there. When I need someone to just help me learn something, she's always there. When I need someone to encourage me, she was always there. She's always been part of like a shoulder I can always lean on and count on. Always. So anyways, I just want to thank you guys for who you are. Okay, almost done. Wrapping up right now, Mr. Willis. Alright. Alright. Yeah, you yeah. have. Alright. You have really helped, so just, you have really helped shape who I am. And you've all grown me in a multitude of ways. So through all of this, we are true with him. And uh, so I just want to encourage you all to stay strong in the Lord and let him be your rock. As so many of you have encouraged me and, and uh, been part of my, uh, a rock that I can stand on. I want to encourage you to just lean on God and who he is and let him be a rock. So uh, Psalm 119, 105 through 106, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have taken oath and confirmed it and I will follow your righteous laws. So fellow graduates, I want to encourage you to let God guide you and for you not to stop pursuing him and who he is. Thank you, everybody. Next up, Ms. McKenna Egan. coming to this special event in our lives. Um, 
So as you all know, my name is McKenna, and my family and I moved here um, to Arizona about seven years ago. And after moving to Arizona, I first started out in the public schools. Uh, I soon realized that that was not the place for me, and God had a better plan for my life. I started at WCA in sixth grade, and I fell in love and never left. And after making it through junior high, the big journey began, high school. High school sure has been a roller coaster. It's had its ups and downs, felt like it was never going to end, but here we are at the end of the ride. So over the years, I have participated in a few sports at WCA, basketball, archery, and volleyball. And in each sport, I was blessed to have such amazing coaches who always challenged me and pushed me to do my best. I am very, very appreciative of every single coach I was privileged to have, and I thank you guys. You all know who you are. There's so many of them. Um, you all have had a positive impact on my life and taught me valuable lessons, not only for the sport I was playing, but life lessons. So thank you guys. Next, I would like to thank all of my teachers that I've had at WCA. You all have helped me grow, not only academically, but personally. Some of my favorite memories were the history class projects we did with Mrs. Rigo, making shoes in art class with Mrs. Willis, and my favorite memory was being crowned the queen of Just Kidding by Miss Sherry. <laughs> The lesson I have learned from all of my teachers was to have confidence in myself. So thank you so very much, teachers, for helping me overcome my shyness and helping me show people who I really am and what I'm capable of. So now I would like to thank all of my friends and family for all of the support you have given me. To all my friends, we have made so, so many great memories over the years whether it be the always entertaining bus rides for sports, the unforgettable sleepovers, or the trips to the lake. Uh, those are memories I will never, ever forget. I love you guys so much, and I really have made some lifelong friends. Now, I'm gonna try not to okay. To my family, you guys are the absolute best. I love you all so much. I would like to thank my grandparents for all of the love and support you have given me. To Ross and Kylie, you guys are the best siblings a big sister could ask for. And thank you for always being there for me. And I want you guys to know that I will always be there for you. I love you. Mom and Dad, um, where do I even begin? I am so, so beyond thankful for everything that you have done for me. The Lord really has blessed me with such amazing parents. You have given me your full support, always did what was best for me, and I have learned so much from you. Thank you for always believing me and providing me with a great education and setting me up for a successful future. And thanks for always Getting me out of bed in the morning to go to school, even though it may or may not have taken two or three times. <laughs> but thank you guys so, so, so very much for everything. I love you guys so much. And happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> to my classmates, Joelle, Anna, Matthew, Silas, and John. We did it. We made it. <laughs> we have had so many fun memories over the years, and I will never forget them. They are unforgettable. I am really blessed to have been in a class with such amazing people. Each and every one of you is going to go on and do amazing things, and you are going to go so far in life and have great success. Some of my favorite memories are planning our first ever prom, the hand sanitizer wars, getting paper balls thrown at us in apologetics class, the water fights at lunch, and of course, our amazing senior prank we pulled off. <laughs> so, good luck to you all in your future and your lives to come. I'm going to miss you all so very much. I love you guys. So 
So thank you to every single person who has been a part of my life in any way. You have helped me become the person I am today. Thank you. Zion, you're up. <laughs> Zion Hintz, and I have been a part of WCA since seventh grade, and if I do my math correctly, that is a total of six years. And well, uh, here we are, uh, the graduating class of 2022. Uh, first, I'd like to start off by thanking my family, my friends, my girlfriend, teachers, staff, coaches, and my principals for uh, making my time here at WCA the best it uh, could possibly be. And most importantly, I would like to thank God for his plan on my life and placing me at WCA because I would not be where I am right now um, without WCA. Uh, when I look back on my years here at WCA, uh, I remember so many great memories and times um, that I had here, such as reenacting history with Mrs. Rigo or getting to experience a national basketball championship. Uh, this school made a safe and enjoyable learning ex experience and allowed me the opportunity to be very active in the school, um, including the following such as basketball, um, track and field, archery, youth alive, uh, chess, and even a uh, drama club. Uh, because of the smaller class sizes, I was able to develop close connections and friendships with both my classmates and my teachers. Um, overall, I don't think where I would be today without WCA. I will be heading to Ottawa University to study sports medicine and also to run track and field for the next school year. I firmly believe that WCA has given me not just an incredible education, but also very valuable life lessons that I will use in these upcoming years of my life. A message to my classmates. Although some of you think that, um, um, <laughs> although some of you think that you may have your future all planned out, I highly encourage you to listen to God's plan in your life because um, you don't know it all, surprisingly. Um, and, uh, so yeah, just listen to God, and no matter what um, trials or tribulations come your way, you guys will get through it, and uh, I've seen you guys do that in the past years I've been in school with you guys, so. Um, yeah, um, I'd like to share this short message from Harlem Elvis. Uh, he said if you were given $86,400 every single day, and at the end of the night, it's gone, whether you spent it or not, you would do everything in your power to spend it, because the next day you would know that you were getting another $86,400. Well, every single day you get 86,400 seconds. Why waste time? So everyone here, enjoy your time here. Our time on earth is limited. I highly encourage you to make the most out of your time. Fulfill God's purpose in your life and serve him in every aspect of your life. So in conclusion, I, it would be my honor to sincerely thank every single person who has helped me along my journey and education to being a part of the graduating class of 2022. Thank you. Sonia and I expect a neat schedule. <laughs> I got was a privilege to help coach um, Zion in high jump this year, and he went all the way to state. Our next presenter is Miss Joelle Truxell. memories with friends and classmates, and I've learned a lot. And I didn't just learn the normal academic stuff that you learn in school, I learned like personal growth things. I learned how to have character, confidence, honesty, work ethic, and responsibility. I remember being in seventh grade and barely having any of those qualities. 
<laughs> I also didn't know where my life was going or how I was going to live my life. I didn't know if I would live it for myself or for God. And this is why I'm so thankful that I was given the opportunity to be taught and learn and grow in a Christian environment. This Christian environment solidified these skills as well as showed me how important they are to God. Um, yeah. I want to thank every single one of my teachers, coaches, and leaders for always involving God in everything we did. Thank you for spending endless hours helping us, teaching us, and praying for us. You, helped, you, you all helped me um, ground myself in the Bible, and that is something that I will never, ever lose. Thank you to my parents for sending me to a school that put God before anything else. Thank you for raising me in a home that always honored God above everything. Thank you for staying by my side and teaching me everything that I need to know. Thank you to the rest of my family, grandparents, my brother, my cousins, aunts, uncles, for being there to help me when I needed it, being there to smile and laugh with me and spend time making memories. Uh, lastly, I want to thank my class. I've been with some of you for seven years and some only four, but each and every single one of you has made my high school years something special, enjoyable, and something that I will always look back on with a smile. I will never forget all of the memories that we made, whether it be in our um, sixth grade trip to San Diego when McKenna filled up an entire water bottle with snails and then um, struggled pretty violently to get them all emptied out. <laughs> or this year when we went on our um, apologetics trip to California and we got to watch Doc, Ma Doc Matthew, and Zion attempt gymnastics on the beach in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm going to miss all of our little inside running jokes, like when I was 20 minutes late to class because I couldn't figure out how to open a filing cabinet. <laughs> I'm going to miss being teased about that. It's going to be so weird not seeing all of you every single day, but I know that God has an amazing future planned for each and every one of us. I'm excited to see what happens in mine, and I'm even more excited to see what God has in store for all of you. I can't wait to see all the people, or the kind of people that will become. So thank you so, so much for these past years, and thank you for joining with me. I love you all. Mr. Doc Massey. So, as you know, my name is Doc Massey. I've been going to WCA for about six and a half to six and a quarter years. I, uh, I've made so many new friends that I never dreamed possible. After moving school to school through sixth grade, I actually hit three different schools in sixth grade. I never knew what the school would have in store for me, and what it had was better than I could have ever imagined. Uh, when I got told about making this speech, it was actually a long time ago, but I didn't start thinking about it until a very short time ago. And I started making my list of people that I needed to thank, and this list went on and on and on forever and ever, kind of like Matthew's speech. That's a record, by the way. Um, so after making that list, I decided that naming everybody by name would take way too long. But I do have a few people that have been very important to me that I feel like need some recognition. First, most importantly, is God. He has moved me in so many different ways throughout these years, and he's given me things that I could have never dreamed of, and I hope that he'll continue to give me things that I wish I could have always had. Uh, second, I'd like to thank my parents for always being there for me, whether in-state or out-of-state or with me or not. You guys have been the best support I could have almost ever asked for. I couldn't have done life without you, whether, whether it was just anything. I don't know. There's so many things you guys do for me on a daily basis that I am so thankful for. You have no idea. Uh, next, my teachers. Uh, Mr. Duffin especially. My math skills have went from at least zero to 100 in the past four to five years. That is 
all of us all that you need, Mr. Nathan. Ms. Rigo has taught me a love for history like no other, and I am very grateful for that. It is, I, um, I don't remember who said it, and I should know, but those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it, and I am thankful to Ms. Rigo for teaching me history so that I have learned those lessons that I don't have to learn the hard way. <laughs> um, all my other teachers, Ms. Demeter, for being the first teacher that I had when I came to this school, which was a great first impression, by the way. Love you, Ms. Demeter. <laughs> and any others that I haven't mentioned. My coaches, my coaches have taught me athletic ability beyond imagination. Uh, most of you know when I was, especially these guys, when I came to this school, I was about this tall and about this big <laughs> So having coaches in my life that pushed me to my limits and taught me how to take care of my body is amazing. And I'm so thankful for y'all and I'm thankful for the education that I got in that regard. Oh my gosh, okay, so I am thankful to my girlfriend also for having someone in school with me to stumble through this thing we call life together. Um, my parents are always there for me, my teachers are always there for me, but it's always nice to have someone else in your corner that's either related or not related in this instance. Um, uh, finally, my friends. If, if I didn't have the friends I have today, I would not be where I am. Most of my friends are sitting up on the stage, a lot of them are out in this crowd, people I play basketball with, the people that don't even know all of you exist, those friends. Um, I'm just so thankful for every one of them because everyone, everyone I know has taught me something that is valuable. Um, and finally, I'd like to say because of the so-called jitters that I have right now, I am totally missing a bunch of people, but if you're out there and you're thinking, oh, I need to be thanked for this, you are probably being thanked. Because there are so many people in this room that have done so many things for me that I can't even remember them all. And thank you to everyone if that is what you're thinking. <laughs> so, like I said before, everyone's taught me a lesson, and everyone has, everyone that I'm thinking or not thinking, because, you know has always taught me something that I've learned, and they've helped me make decisions throughout my life. Whether those decisions were good decisions, or bad decisions, or just, you know, like what water water would buy, they have always taught me something, and I would not be anywhere I am today without the people that have taught me those lessons. And finally, the toughest part. Oh, so, we, most of you I've been going to school with for the past four years, um, McKenna and Joel, I've been in it for the long run. Zion was here in 7th grade, Matthew in ninth grade, I believe, and Anna in 9th grade. And every one of them I have watched grown and watched become men and women of God that is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. And I know that every one of you are going in a different pathway, and I know that every one of you has a set, a set heart on God, and that no matter where you are going, I almost for 100% certain know that you will be following God. I pray that you find what you love to do and that you seek that out in your daily life. And there's so many things that any of you can do. I mean, the guy made the pool noodle, people. Pool noodle. <laughs> so it's not that hard to find something that you should be successful in. Okay? So just listen to God and make smart choices. That's, that's all I can give you. Thank you. <laughs> You all, this doesn't take anything away from my love for you, because you are like the story of the prodigal son. You are like the daughters and son that were faithful and stayed there, and the father had no less love for them. I mean, he loved them with his whole heart. And then there was Doc. <laughs> so I gotta tell you, in junior high, he might not wanted to leave, but I wanted him to leave. <laughs> But now, when I see this man of God and what he has become, welcome home. Well, if there were to be a valedictorian of our school, I believe this young lady would qualify, Miss Anna Gangle.
just have to sit through one more, one more. <laughs> okay, so, hello and good evening, family, friends, and teachers. My name is Anna Gangle, and thank you for coming out to celebrate our graduation with us tonight. So, I went to Congress school from kindergarten all the way to eighth grade, and then I came to WCA in ninth grade, and I'm graduating now. So, yeah. When I was in eighth grade, about to promote into high school, I thought graduation would be a million years away, but here I am, standing before you, about to graduate. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you hope and a future. God will be by our side no matter what lies before us. We know we can conquer anything with God on our side. We are going to go through a huge change, which can be a little scary, but we can make it through by keeping the faith and he will go before us. So the six of us have grown really close together for the past four years and some of us even longer than that. Like I've known Zion ever since second grade and Matthew ever since fifth grade. So, and through those years we've laughed, we've cried and we've shared our hopes and dreams together. And there are so many memories I will never forget from WCA. Like, it could be someone falling in the mud, <clears throat> or um, going on trips with each other overnight. Oh, those are just so fun. And, but this one uh, memory really comes to mind is when, so this was either freshman or sophomore year, we had math class in a room that had high tables, and I'm kind of shorter than the average person, but um, I was sitting at the higher tables, and Mr. Douthit said, okay, everyone stand up to pray, and I stood up, and then he looked around, and he's all just, Anna, stand up. <laughs> and then I said, I am standing. He's like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> and then, I think that happened once or twice after that, too. But, yeah. <laughs> and then something I will also never forget is being part of the Lady Lions volleyball team. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can do it, okay. Um, so in eighth grade, like Miss Guido said, I really hurt my knee and volleyball was my life. I loved volleyball so much and I was not able to do that freshman year. And then, Senior year, I was able to do it, which I was so ecstatic to be able to do that. And after all those years of not playing, I was able to finally, finally play the sport that I loved. We had great fellowship with the other girls on the team. Like, I was on the team with McKenna, and Joelle was taking stats. But we even went to the quarterfinals, which is awesome. I love that. And even though we didn't win, we had an amazing season, and I will never forget it. And thank you, coaches, for an amazing season and growing me through. Whoa. <laughs> I think there's a draft in here, maybe. <laughs> um, for the amazing season, yeah. Okay, so I would like to take this time for thanking everyone in my life. So to start out, I would like to thank my parents for always being there for me and loving me and raising me up in a godly household. Mom, it's okay, you don't have to cry. <laughs> but, um, and to my little sister, Sarah, I do love you. I love you so much. You will never know how much I love you. And thank you for being understanding and having to deal with me every day. And yeah, to grandma and grandpa, oh gosh. <laughs> Thank you for going above and beyond for supporting me. Thank you, Grandma, for playing games with me, for making delicious meals and teaching me more and more about God. Thank you, Grandpa, for teaching me how to fish and playing with me when I was younger, like baseball, and sharing so many laughs. And then to my Grandpa Robert, I would love I'd like to say thank you for loving me and praying for me. I would also like to thank the teachers and staff of WCA and also of Congress Elementary. 
for always being there and believing me believing in me and pushing me to work my hardest and instilling a love for God in me. And finally, to you guys. Thank you for being such amazing friends for so many years. And you guys really are my family. I love you so much and I can't wait to see what God does in your life and where you will end up. Thank you. get to this wonderful part of this evening, the awarding of the diplomas. And so we'll begin with Matthew Day to save us. to so many of us, Lord, we have been blessed by them in our relationships with them. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for, uh, Lord, I believe that eye has not seen and ear has not heard, nor entered into our hearts the plans that you have for them. Father, I believe, God, that, uh, Lord, you are going to do great and mighty things in them so that you can do great and mighty things through them. Lord, I ask you, God, to continue to guide their path. I pray, Father God, that you... Lord Jesus would uh, bless them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I pray, Father, that they would have ears to hear what you are saying to them and that they would always seek your counsel 
and, and desire your wisdom, desire your plan for their lives. Pray that they will follow it and you will bless the path that they follow as they pursue the purposes that you have for them. May they be blessed abundantly above all that they can even ask or imagine. And may you bless their families as well, Lord. We thank you for them in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 singing the doxology. If you look in your program, we have the words there. Praise God from 